Hey guys, welcome to another edition of If This Car Could Talk. My name's Dana, and this week I'll be bringing you an extremely rare 1970 Dodge Challenger RTSE that was born a Panther Pink car. If that's not cool enough, owner Greg Pepler has had it for many, many years and has got a great story. If you don't already subscribe, just click on that free subscription button and you'll never miss a single video. I always enjoy finding these amazing cars and trucks and bringing you their stories each week. I think you're going to like this car and the tale it could tell. Now, let's go for a ride. Stay tuned as Greg and I unveil exactly how rare this Mopar e-body really is. My, my name is Greg Pepler. I'm originally from Long Island, New York. currently live in Buckeye, Arizona. And I own the 1970 Dodge Challenger RTSE. I, I originally bought it roughly around 1984. I bought it upstate New York. At the time I had a Challenger previously that I sold and I just wanted another one. But I wanted a rust free car so I looked for over a year. And a friend of mine was upstate New York and he saw it in a gas station. He gave me a call and said you need to look at this car. And once I saw it, I knew that was the car and I purchased it. And I've had it ever since then. Upgrades I've done is I, I did restore it. Um, my brother-in-law installed the vinyl roof and my brother-in-law did the front bucket seats which are on the SE are leather bucket seats. He bought a, a cowhide and he actually sewed it from scratch. Um, again I've restored it. Um, since we've lived out here in Arizona upgrades I've done is I fuel injected it to make it easier to use and I put an overdrive and a gear vendors overdrive in it again to make it highway friendly. I currently am getting ready to put the air conditioner, get the air conditioner working again because you need it out here in the Arizona sun. The car is uh, originally a Panther pink car and the paint code is FM3 and again it's a, a 1970 RTSE and Panther Pink was a 1970 color only. And doing research on the Panther Pink, um, come to find out that they, you know, records are obviously aren't exact, but uh, they, they made anywhere from 26 to uh, two. But currently that I'm aware of, and again, I've done a lot of research, pantherpink.com, uh, Galen Grovier, I hope I'm pronouncing that correct, um, and also Barry Washington, he's another big Mopar guy, and uh, from what I can understand, there's really only two around, RTSEs, that is, Panther Pink, and I believe mine is the only numbers matching one that is around. You know, again, could be wrong, but to my knowledge, that's correct. So, um... That kind of makes it unique. It's kind of a, a talking subject. And I do have the documentation. It was docu documented by Galen Grovier, Barry Washington. Um, it's on the pantherpink.com registry um, and various other websites I've done over the year. So the one year they were doing um, at Chrysler's in Carlisle, every, Carlisle, Pennsylvania, every year they do uh, a different theme and the one year it was Panther Pink cars they were featuring. So uh, I actually had gotten an invite to go to Carlisle and bring my car to Carlisle uh, for the Panther Pink reunion, I believe they called it. Um, but uh, I, I explained to them my car is black and, and they actually got my name, I believe, from the Panther Pink registry. Um, but they didn't care it was black because I have, again, it's fully documented. I have the original build sheet, just that it had the history they, they invited me. But unfortunately, I didn't go. Um, I didn't, I, we did go. I didn't bring the car. It was just, just timing wasn't just right to do that. But my wife and I went, and when we went, we went into the main building where they were featuring cars. And uh, actually, on the brochure they give you when you check in, they had a 1970 RTSE in Panther Pink. So when I went into the building, um, the guy who runs the Panther Pink Registry, I said to him, I didn't see it. I said, where's the you know, RTSE Pink Challenger? And he said, oh, they didn't finish restoring it in time, so they didn't make the show either. So uh, I, I just said to him, um, is it a numbers matching car? And, and he said, no. 
And so at that, that at that point, just talking, I said to him, so how many numbers matching cars are there in that particular model? And he goes, that I'm aware of, he goes, just yours. So that was like kind of a wow moment, you know? But again, you know, it's it's interesting, good talking point. Uh, body style, I just always love them. And this one is an SE, so the SEs are different in, in the sense they have a smaller back window. I, I think it's called the rear valance is different than the standard Challenger. The overhead console has the, uh, the alert system where it tells you the doors open, low fuel, and seat belts. So that's kind of different from a regular Challenger. But I've just always been attracted to the, the e-bodies, particularly the 70. I just love the grille and uh, I love the taillights. So that's kind of what I like about them. The engine is, it's the original engine. It's a 383. It's a 50, original 54,000 mile car. It's never been a part that I'm aware of and I've owned it since roughly 1984. And uh, everything on it is pretty much how it came from the factory, except for the fuel injection and recently a alternator upgrade to, you know, for the fuel injection, the fuel, electric fuel pump, and hopefully soon the air conditioning. But other than that, everything is, is original. Uh, as a matter of fact, until about a year ago, it actually had the original exhaust system on it. Um, when I did the upgrade for the fuel injection, um, you could see it was a little tired, so I just replaced it with a, a stainless steel system. I've actually had this car before we had children, so all of my children have been around the car their whole life. I have pictures of my wife and my two boys at a car show when they were in a wagon. And my oldest son is now 33. So I have pictures of, of both sons through the years um, around the car growing up. And my oldest son with, at the time, was his girlfriend. And then um, when we moved here, I had the car shipped out here. The car got here before we did. And my son took, you know, took possession of the car from the, you know, moving company. So I have a picture of him and his now wife, uh, you know, kind of pointing at the car, proof that, that it arrived and it was safe. <laughs> so, you know, so it's been around my family, again, my, my, both my sons their whole life. If I do restore it, it will be pink again, yes. Because actually the way it came from the factory, it was panther pink, and in the back it had the black bumblebee stripe which uh, when I think about it now, it probably look pretty, pretty nice. So I would, um, whether I'll do it, I don't know. Right now the paint is still pretty good. And uh, I just have some other stuff I'm doing. So that's kind of on the back burner, except for the AC. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna do the, the AC. I upgraded the lights to the LED lights, but I wanted the LED lights that look stock, not the ones with like the ring around it. I just want, you know, when you look at the car, I want it to look stock, so. Uh, you know, I've been busy doing that, a lot of wiring, but it's drivable, it's usable, and it's fun. You know, and that's what I like about it. Over the years, sure, we've had it, we've had it all over. We've had it to Montour, we've had it to Shelton Island, Greenport, um, basically all over Long Island. Any place on Long Island, it's pretty much been. So, uh, yeah, we've, we've done a lot of trips, but moving out here, again, that's why I wanted the overdrive. Um, want to be able to explore other places. It's like a new horizon out here for us. So that's the idea is to get out and go explore. I'm sure you loved the story of Greg's car, right? It's always cool to find a car that's been in the same family for decades. Plus, it was a really rare, original, cool car. Hit the thumbs up button and leave a comment. I'd love to hear what you guys think. I'd like to thank Greg, the owner of this week's feature car, for taking the time to show all of my YouTube friends his beautiful and very rare Mopar muscle car. We'll have a follow-up video posted on Thursday this week where you'll learn more about the history of the feature vehicle's origins. The only way you'll be sure to see it is to subscribe to the channel. It's free too. My name's Dana. Tom and I will be bringing you 
two new videos a week now instead of just one. Next week, we'll be bringing you a one family owned 1978 Ford F100 that's posted nearly 600,000 miles. We'll see you on Thursday. Be careful out there.